Hello and welcome everyone to Theorycraft, the series where we take concepts and make theoretical techniques to accomplish the goals we set for ourselves. In this episode, we're going to be exploring the size of minecarts hitboxes, and seeing how we can exploit them with special rail configurations and other hitboxes to create game-breaking elevators with speeds up to 40 meters per second. Before we do any mathematics or theory crafting itself, we need to understand how minecarts and hitboxes work. In the end, we can't do anything with minecarts until we understand them. To find out the facts, I asked Cabo to dive into the code and find out all the details about minecarts and the hitboxes of other entities. In the X, Y, and Z dimensions, minecarts have a 0.98 meter by 0.7 meter by 0.98 meter hitbox. Ghasts have a 4 meter by 4 meter by 4 meter hitbox. Boats have a 1.5 meter by 0.6 meter by 1.5 meter hitbox. And spiders have a 1.4 meter by 0.9 meter by 1.4 meter hitbox. Certain entities can enter certain blocks given certain conditions. For example, minecarts can travel into a block if they are coming from a sloped or curved rail, and blocks can also be pushed into entities by the use of a piston. Almost all entities have a repulsive force based on their hitbox, which acts upon other entities. This can be seen in things like boat-to-boat -boat interactions, minecart-to-minecart -minecart -minecart interactions, minecart-to-mob interactions, and also mob-to-mob -mob interactions. However, there are some cases where this hitbox-based repulsive force is ignored. For example, no item entities have this repulsive force, and also players never directly experience a repulsive force from any other entity. Additionally, there are certain times when different types of vehicles interact where a repulsion is not observed. For example, minecart boat interactions and furnace minecart to minecart interactions. Finally, the coordinates of any entity are located at the center of its XZ dimensions of the hitbox and the bottom of the Y dimension of its hitbox. So now we have had a good briefing on the properties we are going to be exploiting. Now we can get to the fun stuff. But of course, we must start with the basics. The first most important thing is the rail placement. To get the fastest elevator, we are going to want the least travel time for one level to the next. If we just simply take a regular upward sloped minecart rail, we can see that our minecart would have to travel up the whole of the rail to reach the second level. However, we can exploit property number one that Cabo explained to make this system even faster. With property number one, we can place rails like this and allow the minecarts to pass through the block and onto the rail above. This way the minecart only needs to move a very small distance to reach the next level. But how far do they actually have to move? We can use the teleport command to find out the exact position of the minecarts so we can see exactly how far we need to push the minecarts along the diagonal rail for it to be on the rail above. The command we use is slash tp at e r equals 5 tilde tilde tilde. We use a radius of 5 just because I have a lot of minecarts in my world from testing and we want to test a specific minecart close by. As we can see, the minecart is 0.0236 blocks across. We can assume that this is exactly the same in the other direction due to symmetry. Therefore, there is a 0.0472 block gap between the two centers of the minecarts on each level. But the center of the minecart's position doesn't exactly depict the boundaries of its hitbox. The hitbox itself is 0.49 blocks away from these two centers. So the total gap the minecart is going to be bouncing between is going to be roughly 0.49 times by 2 plus 0.0472, which is equal to 0.98 plus 0.0472, which is roughly 1.027 meters. Now we have found the region in which the minecart is bouncing between, we need a way to make the minecart go back and forth. For this, we could use regular minecart rails, and in the past, this has been used. Check out Daniel Coates' easy-to-make minecart elevator to see that in action. However, this, of course, is extremely slow. 
since the minecart has a massive distance to move. This is where we use property number two that Cabo explained. Minecarts bounce off other minecarts and mobs. So we need to make a minecart hitbox barrier out of minecarts which creates a 1.027 meter region in the center of the elevator. We can use boats and other blocks to align these minecarts, which bounce the elevating minecart upwards, into very precise locations. Finally, it is worth noting that mobs such as ghasts do not repel minecarts as strongly as minecarts themselves, so bear this in mind while building your designs. Now, technically, if we get this hitbox barrier set up perfectly using minecarts, boats, and other mobs, we'll be able to achieve a perfect 20 meters per second elevator. So, why did I say in the beginning of this video that it is possible to reach elevator speeds of up to 40 meters per second? Well, the reason is because of a glitch I found while testing my theory. And this was my test. Looks pretty standard, right? We have a hitbox barrier and a region of free space. But when we send the minecart up the elevator, it gets stuck. The reason it gets stuck is it's being prevented from going down onto the next rail by this minecart. However, if we destroy this minecart, the traveling minecart will jump up two blocks instantly in the same game tick. If we can travel two blocks every game tick, and there are 20 game ticks in a second, then theoretically we can achieve a 40 meters per second elevator. However, unfortunately I do not have all the answers, and from here onwards it is down to your own creativity to create the 40 meters per second elevator. If each one of you made your own design for one of these super fast elevators, we would have 2550 designs. 90% of them will probably be the same ideas, but maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to find a design which is in fact faster than 20 meters per second. But for now, 